Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Were you ready? No. Okay. <laughs> hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig, and today I am with my awesome fiance, Brenna. Brenna, what are we doing today? Because we're getting into cowgirl country, and that's a little bit out of my element. Well, I'm here. Uh, so yes. today we're taking a look at these uh, Alkalis booties. These are the uh, Python leather. Yes, they are. They are epic, and I'm super pumped. This is one of the in-depth reviews. That means we're doing a initial unboxing and review. We're doing the extended test. We're doing the interview with Linda Acalas, the owner of Acalas, and we're doing final thoughts right here, right now. Let's get into it. Brenna, there are python booties in here. Are you pretty pumped? Yes, I'm very excited. All right, let's do it. Let's open it up. Come on, you're keeping me in suspense here. Ooh, that's nice. I like your logo. I can just see a little bit of the side. Whoa. Whoa. Do you see this? Jeez. That looks incredible. This is amazing. So tell me your first thoughts. You, you seem speechless right now. They're so cool. Now, what attracted you to getting python booties? I just have seen the snakeskin style be really popular. Mm -hmm. Everyone from like Sam Edelman to Zara has had snakeskin like in the past few years. Like just very recently though, I've seen a lot of people wearing it and I was like, Cause just because you like the look of it. Yeah, I like the look. It's like, I want a neutral, but I'm tired of plain black or, you know, plain black leather or plain white or plain brown. It's like, what else is there that's still like a neutral goes with a lot of different things? Uh -huh. So, enter snakeskin. Yeah, it looks great. What are some of the features that you like most about this boot right now? Right now, I'm really digging the heel height. Mm -hmm. As a shorter person, I'm only 5'2", I'll take height wherever I can get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm into that. Um, the other thing that I really like and what initially attracted me to the boot is the rounded toe. I also like the zipper at the back because I tend to have flatter feet. Um, and so getting my feet into cowboy boots and making them fit right is historically impossible for me. Um, and so with the zip, that just means I can get my foot in there a lot easier. It'll be more comfortable to put on. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. also I like that they are shorter. So they're a booty, they're not a full boot. Mm -hmm. um, and I always, just because of my height, have had problems with like where my calf muscle hits. Yep, and we're gonna have to do a video about that too. We'll do a video on that. Uh, but it just makes it impossible for me to find boots that actually fit. And so a booty, I think, will be the right calf height yeah. for me. What you got there is a three and one quarter inch heel. So that's going to make you <laughs> five, five, five and, or five, five, or five, five and a half. Five, 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 six. You got eight inch boot shaft here, tall. Uh, the side pull straps, of course. Mm -hmm. And red leather lining, which I gotta say is pretty cool. It looks really cool. Yeah. It definitely like sets it off. Yeah. And the lining around the pull straps, again, it's just, I love it. It's so detailed. We also got a single stitched welt here, and I like how close and tight that welt is to the boot. It just makes it look really classy. I don't like the double stitch welt. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah, it does make it look like, really blocky. You don't need a flipper. <laughs> yeah, flipper. <laughs> Careful, you're gonna cause controversy here. It's gonna be good. All right, well. Let's talk about that in the comments. <laughs> The leather sole, turquoise, that is really nice. Mm -hmm. Stacked leather heel. So this three and a quarter inch here, here is all stacked leather, it looks like. It That's looks good. really nice. And then you have a rubber heel cap to top that off. And I also like that you can tell that it is real and it feels real because in the back, they're actually different. So you can see on, I think it's this one, the scales are just much bigger, and okay. on this one it's smaller. And it's just like, with an exotic, you want it to feel special, and uh -huh. you want it to feel custom, and you want it to feel your own. And the fact that it just doesn't completely match in the back just has that little like, 
Oh right, this is the fine art piece when it comes down to it, and this was handmade and someone picked out that piece of leather to go back there, and that just makes it feel expensive, and I appreciate that. Well, it's not cheap either. It's not cheap, but it's just the little things that make things feel expensive. Like for instance, I think if you walked into a Gucci store and you bought the cheapest thing possible and it fell apart in a day, you'd be like, that doesn't feel expensive. Mm -hmm. This feels expensive, whether or not it is, I mean, Plus, up to your budget. Plus in your world, you have a lot of fake snake skins yeah. around. So I walked into Sam Edelman the other day and they had a cute pair of like, uh, like Western style booties with like the cut here that was much shorter and it had like the Python look to it and I picked it up and I was like, oh, it feels cheap. You can tell it's not real snake skin, which I mean, maybe you like, maybe you don't. And it just felt like hard and plasticky. The heel wasn't as nice. I think they're selling it for $180. What you're getting doesn't feel expensive versus instead of buying one pair of like crappy shoes that's probably gonna wear out, buy one pair of nice quality shoes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna feel more luxurious wearing it. You're gonna get that like, oh my God, I fucking rock. You know, that you always want when you wear a pair of shoes. The confidence. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what boots are all about. Right, and I know that many of you in the Kawaii community feel this because mm -hmm. I see the comments that you put on Jeremiah's picture. <laughs> Hey, it's all and you're about. Like, I'm, I I'm feel the same good, way. You know? the same way. That's why you wear boots. And a and cheap pair of shoes isn't going to give that no, to you. No, no. You got to have something quality. You yeah. got to have something that makes you feel good. And real python is going to make you feel good. So, without us talking and without further ado, let's just put these re real python booties on. Ooh, they feel nice. You just kind of slide your foot right in there because the inside is just leather. Whoa. They feel like they're definitely a true to size, six and a half. Whoa, those look so cool. Wow, those are sexy. So they fit great. Um, they're definitely a true to size. So if you're thinking about buying from El Calis, I can say like, I'm a six and a half, always a six and a half. I have that little bit of heel slip, um, so that's good. And they are all leather on the inside, so you will kind of feel a little bit more slippery. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely have no shoes that are all leather on the inside. <laughs> so this is a fun first experience for me. Um, they feel really nice. The height is good. Like I don't feel like I'm wearing almost four inch shoes, I don't typically, like I wouldn't just break out a pair of four inch shoes to wear to work, but these are so comfortable and they don't really feel like four inches. Um, I'm pretty sure I could run in these. <laughs> I wanna see that. <laughs> like they're definitely uh, super comfortable, made for wearing. They feel good, I can move my feet around in them. They're not too tight, maybe a little tight in the like um, right across where my toes are, like the toe bone. The toe box is tight? Just like right here. But oh. I think that's just because they're brand new and I would prefer them that way because if they were too loose, you know, there's nothing you can really do about that. But this way, they'll be fine. Um, and I think that they will stretch and just form fit and be perfect. And I'm really excited about that because these boots look really awesome. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about the height because they are taller than I'm used to wearing. Um, but from what I can tell, like they're doing a good job of holding me in. They look good from where I'm standing, <laughs> which is really just, you know, looking down. My initial thought after I tried them on for the first time was, holy shit, these things are made impeccably well. Like I said, you touch it and you're like, oh, this is nice. It's got a lot of the the nice markings of boots that I've seen you have. Yep. Um, just in like our travels. Obviously you've had a lot of boots come through the house and I get to look at all of them. Mm -hmm. Lucky <laughs> <perk>. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have as many cowgirl boots. I don't know if we've talked about this before, but like finding boots for me is incredibly difficult. I'm short, like, my calf just doesn't fit them. They don't really make them for me unless they're like 
fluffy and pink and diamonds, which is not really my thing. So being able to have something that is the same quality and a similar like called upon style of something that you might have, it's just amazing quality and it's like Western inspired, just makes me feel like it's a really cool thing that I don't think a lot of people are doing right now. So we are at the Crush Wine Festival at Pimbardo's. We just had a great wine tasting, lots of messages with wine makers, super amazing. We decided this would be a great time to do the Because of the height, and you're gonna get this on any high heel, you can't wear it all day. Like, it's a beautiful boot. You are gonna look stunning, and you are gonna wanna wear it all day, but your feet are gonna hurt. If you're anyone like me who's used to wearing high heels, you're comfortable in high heels, I don't have a problem with walking in high heels or anything like that, but we wore these for, well, I wore them for what, four hours when we went to the wine tasting, maybe a little bit longer, and at the end of the day, my feet were killing me, I'm gonna be honest with you. And my feet would really be killing me if I wore these too. <laughs> <laughs> I think Linda actually agreed. She said, you know, I bought, I brought a pair of these boots with me to a concert and it was the only pair of boots that I brought with me. And I was kind of regretting that when I was at the concert at the, at, uh, she had traveled and she's like, yeah, my feet were hurting a little bit. And it's like, the heel is just so high. That's just what you get. It comes with the territory. Anyone who's gonna buy a high heeled boot probably understands that. So that would be the only thing that I'd maybe consider is plan your outings if you're going to wear these. But I mean, if you're at an office job or you're going to dinner or something like that, these are a great choice. What were your thoughts when we were talking to Linda? What were your thoughts about that conversation? She's super fun to talk to. I liked her ideas. She has a ton of ideas. You can really tell that she cares about what she does and it's a passion project. She's just not doing it because she has to or because she loves fashion and is forced to make something. No, it's none of that. I just love the family business and I love cowboy boots. I love being in the ladies department. So it all started there and going on buying trips to like Denver and just always wanting to work there and having a passion for like picking out women's boots and women's clothing. And then my mind would start rolling because it was like Chicago's fashion, but not too big. And just like merging, like when I was like black on black and I wanted to look chic and just pull my cowboy boots on. And then it was always like now the heels and then the booty and they weren't very good quality. And that's how it started getting into like, oh, let me do half boots. Cool. So it kind of sounds like uh, you're recognizing the trends in what is going on, but then actually bringing quality to those trends. Yes. Obviously it's not like a welted leather also boot and it doesn't have 365 steps for construction, but <laughs> grabbing the quality of like a leather lining, a metal zipper, not like half at, like half, you know, like cutting corners with like a plastic zipper, a cheap pig lining. And I wanted to grab that from a cowboy boot and bring it into the booty. Like I was very set in on that. I didn't care if it was gonna be way more but it's just like I wanted to deliver that with my name and like the brand of the boot for women. I've tried to find cute booties that don't break the bank and I will say it's so hard to find quality. You can find them in the price range that yours are, but they are, the quality is just not as good. So you have to spend like triple what you're charging to get the quality that you're providing. So it's just like an amazing market fit. So. Thank you for doing that. Well, I'm so happy you appreciate it and you noticed. And it's also like a way to build my brand and just to like have that high quality, you know, standard and deliberate. And I also believe since I am outsourcing everything and cutting like down expenses, it's like for me to like woman, like consumer pricing, it has to be honest. And I think that's the only way I'm gonna be able to build a brand without yeah. having like too much recognition like across the country. What's your process? Is it like, here's what's available to me and here's what I can create? Or do you like have a vision that you see? Vision that I see. And then it's, well, the problem is like sourcing it, but I didn't have like, you know, the capacity to go to, or the ability to go to Italy. And that's when I was like, wow, your creativity could be limited when you have this great idea but it's also like, if I can make it happen in a tannery in Mexico, 
but it's also investing the time to, you know, do the samples and, you know, have them believe in like an asset high finish. So it's really like my mind and then like the color that I might get inspired from, like, you know, on Instagram, they have like Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week. Yep. So it's really cool how you can just like see street styles and like, you know, flip the pictures. So I'll see like a yellow and I'm like that yellow for a boo. And that's how I get going. I'm like, thank God for Instagram and people posting their lives. Yeah. <laughs> right. I noticed on Yeehaw Cowboy, there's a bunch of Python boots. Is that like one of the main uh, exotics that you use in your line or are there like others that are more dominant or how does that work? No, 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 no. It was actually the first one I've used is Python, but I did a natural Python, but in different silhouettes, like the mid heel, and then the peat is the one you purchased with the block teal. And then we did this anklet cut out. <laughs> and then the different variation of the Python, I think that you're referring to is a navy suede Python. Yeah, that's cool look. So this is a hand bleach, like it's bleached the first steps and then it's hand painted navy. <laughs> That's so impressive. And it's suede. Yes. That well, the finish cool. of it gives it like a suede finish. Hmm. It's so cool. Is there a reason why you went to Python first? Like you got a whole bunch of different kinds of styles there. Uh, what oh, drew you? Appealing to women. Oh, okay. Cause yeah. you know, it would be awesome to do like Yeehaw plays with like alligator and you know, he has like awesome skins, but he's like men. So my mind would go like, yeah, I'm gonna do an American alligator. But I was like, hold on, Linda, do you really think women, will you buy an American, like an alligator boot? Uh, yeah, if it looks anything like that, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> you would? Yeah, totally. Or ostrich? Yeah, I would buy anything that like looks good. I feel like ostrich especially is so popular right now because it's on like all the bags. And so why not put it on a shoe? What designer bags? Uh, well, like the Hermes bags. Yes. Okay. Like, it's huge on that. Now you're giving me an idea. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it happened here. <laughs> yes. Like, I would love if there was more options for women. I don't want to buy something that's like pink and got rhinestone crosses all over it. Like, I'm over it. I want something else. <laughs> like, make I know me what something you're talking about. <laughs> that I can wear. That's a good one. Pink and rhinestone. It's like every leg like, boot out there for women. Or crosses. Or yeah. like the floor, like the embroidery. Yeah. Like, when I had meetings with like cowboy boot factories, I was like, don't, you know what? I'm not going to do an embroidery boot. I'm not your competition. Yeah. Don't worry. They were kind of like, get out. Because I was like cracking up with you. But I was like, you're still going to say a no to me anyways, because they felt like intimidated. But in reality, my collection had nothing to do with like what they were doing. Yeah. So anyone who comes to the market and has like a cool new boot, I don't see why not. There's no reason you can't do it. I think I'm personally tired of it. I'm sure there's other people out there. And now there's also this thing. And I think you touched on part of it is like women want to like mix it up. Like women wearing suits is a huge movement right now. You're right. The pythons look really good with dress pants. Yes. Uh, pencil skirt. I'm like mixing it up once again, back to like, you know, streetwear from like different cities around the world with like fashion week. And then I do the inklet cutout with like Navy dress pants, Ooh, nice. with, like ga the gaucho ones, mm -hmm. like these jeans. I totally started mixing it up too with like dress clothes. Cause it looks really cool. The Python, especially your booty with the peak and then like a pencil skirt and like a vintage shirt, it looks amazing. So like, let's say I'm going out, how much is comfort a part of how you design? So I think about that, like in every pair of shoes that I try on, one of the first things I do is like, how comfortable is this? Can I really wear this to work? Especially in a dress shoe, is that a part of like your process or how does that work? Of course it is. It's the number one thing for me too, because growing up and having to wear cowboy boots, some people like even the bedding or of the insole inside it was you would just feel like the nails or something it was very very uncomfortable and then liking high heels and them being uncomfortable or even the red bottoms that were like everybody needed a pair it was just like murdering your feet 
So with the mid heel and the blocked heel, since I loved wearing heels and I loved wearing boots and I was always in retail being on my feet, I always carried that over. And even when women try it on, they're like, oh, it's too hot. I can't be like, oh, try on my boot. It's so comfortable. <laughs> so it's amazingly, like you could run in the mid heel because it's oh, like yeah. so comfy. After I introduced the mid heel, it took over like the big block heel, the one that you bought. I actually wore the big block, the ones you have to a show, and I think it was Atlanta, and I only took that pair. I was like dragging my feet. I was like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Being on my feet all day, like from eight in the morning yep. till seven o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah, they're not a platform. There's not a lot of like, out, but I mean, you're gonna look good. That's... And it's like how you look good with the tall python. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody mm -hmm. wants to show it off. I did get a bunch of compliments when I wore them. We walked uh, into the restaurant after the event and the hostess was like, hi, welcome to, I think it was called like Fox and the Knife. I love your shoes. Like how many people are in your party? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Look, I have this ostrich bag and it's like the full quilt. Can you guys see it? You this put it in the light. See, you have it in a purse already. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, this is like mine. And like when you said ostrich, I was like, well, I'm actually getting a lot of compliments. And I love that color. Like I want that, that in cool. a shoe. Yeah. Like in the the smaller heel, the little booty, I want that. Yeah, yeah. that's a great color. <laughs> we'll name the style after you. Yes! yes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a sample now. I'm actually gonna be leaving next month. So you can announce it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. I think, and it's color, right? Like a color. You like that turquoise. Mm -hmm. I like the turquoise. Okay, so I'll keep you posted. You think she'll actually make those shoes or those boots and name them after you? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it here first, folks. <laughs> so overall, uh, these are a great booty. In yeah. my opinion, they're at a really good price point because you're going to go out and you're going to spend a few hundred bucks on something that's fake python. And you're going to say, OK, well, you know, it's it's not supposed to be real python. That's how you save the money, whatever. Then you touch these things and the quality all the way down to like the nice zipper, the yeah. stacked heel, the leather inside, you feel it and you know that you're getting something that is a great quality for just a little bit more. And so- But really not that much more because as we spoke with Linda, it's like a lot of the other Python boots like this are going for more than what this is going for. These came in at like 470, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at other Python boots that are this big and this detailed with this much quality, they're going for like six, seven or eight. And I think that's definitely true in the men's world, but in the fast fashion world, you really only have your like $180 booties that are stamped leather if you're lucky, PVC if you're not, and even PVC with this print printed on it is gonna be 200 bucks. And then you're yeah, looking wow. at like the nice boots that someone like maybe a Stetson is gonna put out in the cowgirl style. And so that one's definitely gonna be a little bit more expensive. And I think these are a nice kind of meet in the middle where you can still have that look of being you know, I've got a little bit of cowgirl in there because it's python and it's got all the pole straps and the nice finished details, but it's also got that wearability of the everyday. If you're not someone who wants to wear cowboy, cowboy or cowgirl boots every day, you can yeah. still wear something like this and it's still considered fashionable in our culture and it's still something that goes with pretty much everything you're going to wear. Yeah, it's like Western inspired, but yeah. like really Western inspired. Right. It's a good looking boot. It's a good looking boot. Yeah. And so I think the price point on these is absolutely perfect. Obviously, I wish they were like 50% off, but I mean, that's not the way life works. But you can get them for 10% off if you get them from yeehawcowboy.com and use the promo code JCM10 at checkout. <laughs> I would do that. Thank you so much for watching today, everybody. Brenna, you're awesome. Like, I'm so glad we're getting married. Me so, too. Thanks for being in the video. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of these boots down in the comments. Like this video, and if this is the first time you're seeing our faces, be sure you subscribe. All right, catch you next time. Peace. You got the Python boots and you're looking fine. You step outside and you blow some minds. Same thing every day when you rise and grind. The Python boots and you're looking fine. Yeah, from a Collis boutique now. Yeah. 
You got the python boots and you're looking fine. My name is Jeremiah Craig. Thank you all for watching today. And thank you to my awesome fiance, Brenna, for doing the review, making my job easy today. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.